All right, I'm way late to the party here, but I have finally beaten the game Days Gone. I know it came out in like 2019 and now it's 2022. It's been three years or whatever, but here we are. How's it going, everyone? I'm Keegs, and I'm excited to get into this game because my opinions of it have actually greatly changed from when I started to actually when I finished. So the beginning of this is going to start off spoiler free, and then we're going to work our way into spoilers and heavy spoilers because this game is way too awesome and the story is way too rich not to talk about it. In this game, you play as Deacon St. John and your best friend Boozer is along with you for the ride. And you're just muddling through life trying to get by. Deacon lost his wife in the zombie apocalypse. So now he doesn't really have a reason to live and he just keeps going because he doesn't want to die, I guess. But the story in this game is, in my opinion, unexpectedly awesome. And it's very heartfelt and sad as... You could probably have guessed in a zombie apocalypse when all your friends and family have died from turning into a zombie, then it would be sad. But this game surprised me with the depth that it actually showed within the series. There's a bunch of survivor camps around and all these camps have like really different vibes and you can like rescue people out in the open and you can tell them which camp to go to and some of the camps treat their people really well and some of them treat them literally like slaves so you have to choose who you want to send people to and it builds trust with each camp and when you build all this trust with all the camps then this raises your status from one to two to three and with these ranking ups of trust that you have in the camps you can buy better like weapons and better mods for your bike and a whole bunch of other crap like that that brings me to something that was kind of an annoyance to me throughout this game was the fact that each camp had its own separate currency so you had to keep track of like six different currencies and how much you had at each one of these camps like why couldn't you just make one single currency, you know, give me some bottle caps and that's going to be our currency for the entire world. And you can still lock items behind trust levels in those specific camps if I'm not supposed to be buying them. But why should I have to raise the trust of this camp? And now you're a level three tier trust, but I have no credits. So there's nothing I can do except go get more meaningless bounties and... I mean, those things sold for such little, it wasn't even worth it. Even if you took out, like, an entire horde, you got, like, a thousand credits. Like, great. The beginning of this game, I was so strapped for money all the time and ammo. And honestly, that's actually probably not a bad thing because this is a survival game and you have to survive. Um, but it just wasn't super fun when you would take on a whole group of raiders and you wouldn't even get enough ammo to resupply what it took to kill them. I mean, they're shooting at you with, like, infinite bullets. And then you loot them, and they have, like, a sterilizer. Like, thanks, man. I'm already maxed out on that. But I could really use some freaking AR ammo right now. So uh, that kind of annoyed me. And at the be especially at the beginning of the game, it was really annoying because you're strapped for everything. And I just want to loot up some more ammo. But... I can't do that. Towards the end of the game, it wasn't so bad because I had enough money and stuff by that point. So it did add to the survival aspect, though. So if that's what they were going for, then I think they nailed it. But by the end of the game, I was having a really good time shooting, you know, tons of bullets, not really worrying about my ammo so much and just going around having a really good time, especially the bike upgrades. I thought they were great because getting around the map was a lot easier and when you didn't have to worry so intently on fuel all the time that really made for a more enjoyable relaxing experience to drive around a zombie apocalypse the general combat in this game was really fun honestly i i really did enjoy it and the normal zombies in this game were actually really weak but there were so many of them that they could overwhelm you so easily they might only hit you for one damage but if a hundred zombies hit you at the same time that's an instant death, my friends. So I thought that was a really interesting concept of just being strictly overwhelmed by zombies instead of anything else. And you could outrun them, but only kind of, because 
your jog, your normal just like jog around the map or whatever was not faster than the zombies. You actually had to sprint if you were trying to create any kind of distance between them. And that makes for really intense battles because you only have limited amount of stamina. And without that stamina, once it's depleted, they can actually catch up to you and you really have to manage that and manage your distancing from those other zombies and all those kind of aspects and use your cocktails and everything to give you a little bit more fighting chance in those situations. I did think that the stealth was a little bit finicky in this game because sometimes I could like run right up behind a zombie and then just like stab him in the neck and then other times I would be hiding in a bush and these guys would turn and just like start shooting at me like they knew I was there the whole time even though I did nothing to give myself away and I cannot tell you about these Nero missions where I enjoyed them the first time I played them but by the fourth time I played them or the fifth time it was really boring because you had to go through the whole story over again and I mean maybe that's on me because as you can tell I'm a bit more of a run and gun kind of guy I'm just there to have fun kick butt and kill some zombies and those Nero missions man they really messed me up this is definitely one of the best zombie games out there and I don't really understand why it didn't get as much hype as I feel it deserved at the time Though, I mean, I guess to be fair, maybe it did get that hype and I was just living under a rock at the time and didn't really notice it when it came out. But I'm going to get into spoilers now. So if you haven't played the game or don't want to know anything about spoilers, then this is your cue to hop out of the video. But for now, we are going to get into some spoilers here. Starting off with the end of the game, I cannot believe Sarah survived. I thought for sure she was going to die. I thought he was going to find her. And as soon as he found her, she was going to die again in his arms. And don't get me wrong, I was really happy that there was essentially a happy ending to this game because the tone of this game, I did not think was going to be uh, happy at all. I mean, even Boozer survived at the end, who I thought for sure was dead. And I would have been a little bummed if he had died in that fashion of just blowing himself up on that gate. But nonetheless, I thought it was really good. I did think, like, who's going to take care of his dog? Because, you know... We went through a lot of trouble to get that dog, and then you're just going to go kill yourself like that? So, good for you, Boozer. Good for getting out of that truck. I also thought it was crazy that Deacon's plan to get Sarah out with the helicopter and Nero was to go up to the General's war quarters. Like, dude, you know he spends half his time on the top of that mountain. You didn't think about that in your plan of, like, what if he's up there? I can't believe you weren't shot on sight when you went up there. And I thought for sure we were going to have some kind of brawl shootout at the top of that hill. But then Schizo showed up and things got really weird. I also wanted to see Corey again because I felt like, come on, man, the mountain's cool now. The general's dead and everybody's having a happy uh, Hakuna Matata life over there. And you left right before that. So I really wish that he would come back because he was a cool dude. He saved us. And... Sarah, I thought was interesting because there was like one moment where she shot Jim in the head, the security guard at her old research lab, and she did it so nonchalantly. And I feel like they kind of glossed over that because they, she also had a run in experience with a bunch of zombies in the school. And she was like really scared, like just pulling the trigger and just like completely zoning out. But then she killed that dude and didn't even think twice about it. So I felt like there was a little bit of disconnect between what's going on in her head. And maybe that's the point. Maybe there's a lot going on in her head and it doesn't always make sense. I mean, you're in a really crappy situation there. I also don't understand why Ricky and Iron Mike were so intent on Deacon not finding his wife. I mean, they both said they're like, if you leave, don't come back. We don't want you. and We don't want that mentality. But I mean... He got a very good lead that his wife might still be alive, and now you're telling him to give up on that quest? Like, I understand you didn't want to see him get hurt, I guess, and finding out that his wife was still dead, but I don't know. I think that kind of thing, you really should be edging him on and, you know, telling him to look for some kind of hope. I also felt like the toughest parts in this game were often burning out the nests. I don't know. I always was scared to burn out a nest. I'm here fighting hordes, you know, 100, 150 zombies or whatever, just mowing them down with my RPD. But then, 
as soon as I have to burn out a nest, it's like, who oh, throw my Molotov and run away? And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I thought that was funny, but I don't know if anybody had a similar experience. And maybe it was just because by the end of the game, there were really not many nests left for me. And I felt really confident with my weapons and my skills. But definitely at the beginning of that game, if I saw more than like five zombies, I was freaking out of there. Speaking of the hordes, though, the first time you destroyed a horde was so intense. It was crazy. I mean, everything you had learned up to that point in the game told you do not F with these hordes because they are so dangerous. But then you took that one out and all of a sudden it was like, oh man, I could do this. I could take out some freaking hordes. Screw these zombies. I am the one to be reckoned with, not them. And I thought that was such a great flip in the game to where it felt like you were the prey, and now you feel like the predator. I did get way over too confident with those hordes, though, because specifically looking at you, uh, old Sawmill, that was a tough mission, and I died actually quite a lot in that one, and I didn't realize exactly how many zombies were in there, but it was way more than anything else I had experienced, and I should have done a better job with the traps and setting things along the way to kill them up, but... Um, I mostly I just ran I ran a lot and it was tough I do like that the zombies don't respawn though so I mean they do kind of respawn like at night they like pick up more zombies and slowly over time it'll build back up to full strength but if I killed one right now then I just had to go get ammo real quick and come back they were still really low and you were able to go take them on again which I really thought was a great mechanic I do also wonder if I got an entire horde of zombies and I got them to follow me pretty much, do you think if I got them close enough to a camp that that camp would take out that horde for me? I don't, there were some hordes that were pretty close to the camps and I feel like I could have got them, probably most of them within shooting range of the camp. I wonder if they would have killed them all or if the zombies would have just de before they got really too close in that situation. Let me know if someone else has tried that though. There were multiple times in this game too where I thought it was straight up the end of the game, but it was not. It was all those times where I was like, warning, doing this mission will lock you out of this zone. I thought for sure, I'm like, oh, this is the end mission. This is like saying like the world will permanently be altered after this. Don't do this until you're ready to do this. So I held off for so long on that first mission. And then all of a sudden there was like a whole other part. There were like two or three other missions after the Ripper mission, which I thought was for sure the end one, because it felt like I blew up an entire faction, I took them all out, I destroyed their entire land, but nope, there, there was still more after that, which, don't get me wrong, I liked, there was a lot of good stuff after that, I just, I definitely got kind of tricked into thinking that I was at the end of the game well before I was. I also want to know why that really fast zombie took so many bullets to kill. I understand the brute takes a lot because, you know, oh, he's big, bulky, strong brute, and he takes a lot to go down. But, like, the fast one took just as much to go down, pretty much, and he didn't have anything except speed, obviously. I guess he had some kind of strength, but uh, that was so annoying. At least the screamer girl, though she was probably the most annoying because she altered your vision and it was really hard to concentrate and your whole screen shaking. But like, I mean, one headshot and she was gone. Unlike the other two that were nowhere near that kind of level where it took me an entire clip to take those guys out. And those guys' ears are not worth it. If I saw that guy on my bike, I just said, nope, I'm going. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to waste the ammo on your stupid ass. The one thing I wish I could have done, which we didn't really get to do at all, was to make the people's lives at the camp actually better. You kind of did that with Iron Mike and even, you know, the General's Army over there in Crater Lake. But for the most part, like, all the work camps were just as bad at the end as they were at the beginning, and you didn't get to do anything with that. There were so many situations in which they showed, like, people getting the crap kicked out of them for, you know, not wanting to work or slacking or whatever was happening. And... I felt like we always kept panning over to that scene and we just never got to do anything about it. I just had to witness, you know, people getting beat up and tortured. Maybe that was the point to be like, oh, it's a crappy place to live, you know, no matter what. Even in the best times, people are still getting beat up for no reason. But I, I wish there was something we would have done to make a lot of those people's lives better. I also thought that gathering meat wasn't worth it. I did it throughout the game. It was not worth it. It did not give me enough trust or credits 
to ever feel worth it. So I just stopped kind of doing it. And maybe that's why I was so strapped for cash and I didn't get the perk that got let me get like five meat from everything that I killed. So maybe that was part of my fault. But I mean, just the time it took to like lay down and cut them up and take their meat up. Usually I'd get attacked by another wolf or something. In the meantime, while I was cutting up the first one, there was this one time though, I was fighting a runner. And as soon as like I, I shot him once, and then I rolled and all of a sudden another one came up behind me and I was like, oh crap, two runners. Then I saw a third one coming up and I'm like, wow, three runners. I need to rethink this strategy. I ended up dodging them a couple times and jumping through a window, looked out at them. I kid you not, there were 10 runners there and they were all circling the house and things. And I was shooting them outside the window, but my God, if I had stayed out there, I would have been eaten alive. The end of this game or even the secret ending of this game, um, kind of implies that there's going to be a sequel where he like O'Brien took his mask off and he's like kind of a really intelligent zombie I guess and that kind of implies Days Gone 2 a sequel coming out and I'm really excited for that because I think that would be a great game but I'm really hoping that they don't kill off any of my main characters because I almost want it just to be this nice neat bundled game where all my characters survive and live happily ever after in my head but I know if there's a second game, one of them's going to die, and I'm going to be so upset. So, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. But let me know. What did you think of this game? Did you enjoy it? What was your most favorite part? What was your least favorite part? I'm Keegs. I'd love to hear what you think. So, I'll talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.